Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of. <laughs> so please, 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 please. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Atomic pop feature. <laughs> this is why nobody watches. <laughs> Atomic pop featuring Fat Man, Little Boy. My name is Stephen Corka. Oh, I'm Juan. You're Juan, and we're here to do a full spoiler-filled review of of. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Most of the movie was that Mario. No. Joker. The dancing machine Joker. Where are you going? Whopping. Where you, why are you putting the mic down? We just started. Yeah, do your thing. What are you doing? What do you mean? I'm looking something up. What are you looking up? What are you going? Ha, 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 Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the many the, the many laughs of Joker played by Joaquin Phoenix. This is the one, two, three. This is the fourth live action rendition. No, fifth. We <laughs> didn't even think of Leto. My fault. The 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 fifth live action rendition of the Joker that we have seen on screen, both the small and the big screen. So let's just get right into it. Uh, did we like the movie Joker? Juan, did you like it? No. Not at all, really. I mean, that's a yes or no question, right? That is, a, that is a yes or no question. So overall, no. No. I'm going to go with no as well. If, uh. we're, if, we're, if, we're, if we're doing a hard yes or hard no, I'm going to go with the no. Now, let's go with the, the gray area. Well, first of all, this movie was directed by Todd Phillips, so I thought it was going to be a disaster. He's the guy that did The Hangover. Yeah, right? Right. Um, yeah. This movie wears a lot of its influences on its sleeve. Yes. Right. Well, uh, 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 elaborate the, the, on inf what influences are... The most people? obvious movie is uh, Taxi Driver. Okay. Yeah. Right? Joker is Taxi Driver. Yes, okay. Doesn't fit. Yeah, you've been saying that since day one. Right. Like when they first announced the movie, you saw a preview, you're like, this is Taxi Driver. This ta and it's Taxi Driver. Yes, okay. Even like, you remember the the famous Taxi Driver scene, are, are you looking at me where he's like looking at the mirror with yeah, a yeah. gun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he... He even does that in this movie where he remember when he's the apartment in himself and he's trying to play like he has the gun. Yes. Right. So he they yes. they, they they copy or pay homage to that movie. Uh, and, uh, and they cast Robert De Niro in the movie. So, right. Yes. Which it's also the second big influence being uh, De Niro, uh, the king, uh, the king of comedy, mm -hmm. which is another De Niro early '80s movie. Uh, so the the influences are you know Phillips basically. Uh, Took some some a early '80s movies, yeah, um, and it makes sense because this movie takes place in 1981. Is that the year it takes place? It is the it is it does look late '70s. Well, towards the 80s. end of the movie, yes. uh, where the Waynes are walking out of the movie theater, it's yes. uh, Zorro the Gay Blades playing, which I believe came on '81. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. All right. Did did, did you read that somewhere? Or did you catch that when you? I read it? that somewhere. Right. I did not know when Gor Zorro the Gay Blade came out. I was gonna say that would be very that would be very uh, good of you if you did. Wow, no. a good eye. Um, so let's talk about first. Let's talk about Joaquin Phoenix and his performance. How do you think? How do you think he did? I think. I think overall, I think he did. I think he did a really good job at, at interpreting an iconic character like Joker. He definitely put his own spin on it. I would say, um, you know, uh, the. To be fair, there's two Jokers in this movie, in my opinion. Well, I'm speaking of uh, why what the rise, the Arthur. Well, I, I I think I which think is, which is Joker's real name. The first hour and a half. So uh, we're, I'm gonna. This is a huge spoiler to anybody that's yeah, spoilers, here in the store. This is a huge spoiler. The fuck out of this I split movie. the movie into two into two movies. Okay, go. Before the death of his mother and <laughs> after. I'm yeah. sorry. Go on, go on. And after the death of his mother. So I believe we also see two Jokers. The 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 who he was before the death of his mom and after the death. Yes. I think that that's where you can divide the movie. Yes. Which is 75% of the way in. Okay. So that sucks. So let's talk about that first half. Did you like it? Worst Joker. Yeah, very melancholy. His, his, like his portrayal of Joker up. is the worst Joker in that first two third, uh, three fourths of the movie. You know what, though? To be fair, though, to be a character like Joker, who is an anarchist, a mass murderer, who cares about nothing, including himself, you have to see 
him as a human being deconstruct to bear nothing, which I no. think they did a good job at doing. No, because the Joker doesn't need to be de deconstructed because the Joker's a psychopath. A psychopath a psychopath. You know, when when you when the when people are when you're developing profiles on serial killers and psychopaths, it's always the same thing. All the hints are there at an early age, right? Yeah. Uh, where it's abusing an animal, all that, because there's a lack of empathy, sympathy, all that that's common to serial to 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 psychopaths. Yes. Right. But Joker is supposed to be a psychopath. There is no deconstructing of him as a human but, being. And he's always been off. I mean, we saw him in the beginning. He was on medication. His little binder filled with 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 X porn and and scratches and spelling. Things sure, but but at this wrong, you know? at, at this like, like, at, like he's not all there. Right, but but so at, he gets off the meds, and as soon as he gets off the meds, that's when he really starts to snap. But at, at, as but again, there there's obviously the the stuff that he went through, the abuse and all that. That yeah, that could play into into what he became. Yeah. But at the same time, what throws it off is that Joker in the movie has a political agenda, and that's where I, the divide I, comes I across. I disagree. I don't think Joaquin Phoenix's character of Joker has a political agenda. I think his surroundings created a political agenda based on his actions, but he really doesn't give a fuck. No, absolutely he, not. When he, he even says in the movie that I don't care. I have no political agenda. I can give two shits about any of this stuff. When he talks to Robert De Niro's character, yes. he tells him, he's like, I am sick of being walked over. I am sick of society taking advantage of the poor. He goes on this whole spiel. Yes. So he had a political agenda, which I, is why he does what he does to the Robert De Niro character, right? Because he plays into in, into that part of society in Gotham that looks down on people like Arthur Fleck. Again, you, you have two Jokers. You have the psychopathic Joker that we see towards the end of the movie, right? And we have this man of the people, this falling down Michael Douglas character that's sick of being treated this way. That's not Joker. Yeah. He becomes an anti-hero. We don't know. First of all, we don't know Joker, who Joker is. And this is like probably one of the only like, you know, all out fucking tellings of his origin. I mean, they, they did in the Killing Joke a little, right? But but nothing, you know, th this is probably the most in-depth they've ever gotten into, into the Joker's origin. One of the appeals about the Joker character, in my opinion, is his mystery. We don't really know where he comes from. We don't really know what his motives are. He just is. You know, and this movie kind of threw all that out the door and explained. Right, it. because that's that's what chaos is, right? Yes, yeah. Um, but you know, without diving too deeply into the character and the way the ca character was written, how do you, I think Joaquin Phoenix did a fabulous job at portraying the character? I think the Arthur Fleck, I think the Joker before the mom's death is the worst Joker we've ever seen. I think the Joker at the end of the movie is the best Joker we've ever seen. Really? Yes, I like him more than Heath Ledger's Joker. I. Ooh, ooh. I disagree with you uh, a lot. The the second half that the end that end scene that yeah. Look, don't get me wrong. The end scene was great from from the from the moment he walks into the elevator in full in full get up yes. to the very end. Solid. Once he's the solid. Joker, solid. he is the best Joker I've ever seen. Solid. I mean, he's good, but I don't think he's better than than uh, Heath Ledger. No way. No way. I and but I will say this. I love the dancing. You were making fun of the dancing. I love the dancing. I love it. I thought, I th right, I just, every 20 minutes, I didn't need, uh, yeah, every, it, of a two-hour movie, right? So yeah. that's like seven times, and it's not like, he danced a, a lot. it's not like a quick little thing, it's like no. two minutes long. He danced a lot. He danced Which I know it doesn't seem like a long time, but when you're watching, <laughs> I'd stop, the laugh was the worst too. Sorry. Horrible. Sorry, I have a condition. <laughs> yeah. So. I, 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 I don't know. So. Here, here's the. Here. So you hated the movie overall, though. and also like the conflicting, like in, in the beginning of the movie where they steal his signs and those kids like beat him up. Yeah, right. That was exactly what those rich boys did on the subway, a different way. Yes, right. But the movie is trying to convince us that those kids deserve to die because yeah, they, they, because they're rich and privileged. But the beating he took in the beginning of the movie by the poor kids yeah, no. that was just kids being kids. I think that's coincidence. I think. Oh. I think if it would have been a bunch of uh, poor guys on the subway beating him up, they would have gotten the same fate. It just so happened that they were rich, wealthy guys, right? Because yes. and then because and then it fits the it fits around, the narrative. Society around Joker made it seem like he was the Robin Hood. It it fits yeah. the narrative, but I I believe that that's a that's a it's, that's. I don't think Arthur Fleck 
intentionally killed the three guys in the subway versus the kids. Because they were rich. Because they were rich. I think it had nothing to do with Right, it's a moment that he broke, but I think it fits the narrative of the movie because it's it's never talked about again. I just I thought that was there's a lot of problems I had with the ideology presented in this movie. In fact, I wouldn't even call that Joker. Let's just call him postmodernism. <laughs> Listen, I, I will say this. I think the movie did a great job. Postmodernism is a fucking stupid think, ideology, by the way. I think the movie did a great job at explaining the character of Joker and how he came to be in the city of Gotham and how everyone came to know him, both love him and fear him. Yes, I agree with that. Yes. Because by the end My of the problem is that he's not a psychopath. In the beginning, of the, like, towards it. And I don't think that there's a buildup towards that. Am I wrong? Is there anybody that's the psychologist can tell me I'm wrong? Like, you don't get turned into a psychopath. You're born a psychopath. I, But I don't think Joker's a psychopath. I think he's calculating in everything he always does. A psychopath is calculating. That's why serial killers remain undiscovered for so long. So I think I think Arthur Fleck is, is, is a psychopath. Absolutely. I think... I, think, it, I just I, I can't I think, harmonize I it. He was being, I think he was being regulated by the medications he was taking. He, they said he was on seven different meds. You know, he was being coddled by his mom and 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 living this living this mundane routine of a life. And once he got off his meds, and once the truth about his mother came out, and 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 it just he snapped. He wow. snapped. I don't think that's that. You know, you know he had a psychotic episode that that. That transitioned him into the next phase of his life. I just, I, I find it hard to harmonize that psychopaths have political agendas. I don't think he has a political agenda. I, well, he that whole speech that, to Robert De Niro was a political speech. For those of you that didn't see the movie, but you better if you're fucking watching this by now. Uh, you know, he was, uh, he got on this Johnny Carson like show, Tonight Show, where Robert De Niro was a host, and he went into a monologue about how, you know, the rich. Look down on on the poor and don't care the Thomas Waynes of Gotham and stuff like that, you know. Which yes, I, I will agree, definitely had political undertones to it as well. But I think that's just him playing into it. I don't think he gives a fuck really at the end of the day. I think at the end of the day, he was just there to make a statement that 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 he doesn't care anymore. He's got like you said, he's got nothing left to lose, and he just I think he just wanted to kill fucking Robert De Niro, which is what he ended up doing. Spoilers. I mean, don't you say spoilers before? Yeah, I know. Sorry. Yeah, my bad. My bad. That was terrible. Listen, I will say this too. I love rated R superhero or, or comic book related movies. I love the fact that Joker was smoking the entire fucking time. I'm not a smoker at all, but there is something that just it, it gives you a sense of attitude. I don't think I, I, I think that you it know, I think it plays into the feel of you know, well, it, it plays casually, you know, like it, it plays into the feel of the 1980s. Yeah. Where everyone was smoking. But no, look, man. I don't care. I think that rated R movies, uh, being having the freedom to do that stuff, works for certain characters. Yeah. I think it works for the Joker. I think it worked for Wolverine. Uh, I don't think you need it in Captain America. It does not need to be a rated R movie. It works in Titans, and if you can do that shit in Titans, you can do that shit in any fucking. Well, movie. you can you can make anything dark, but that's really not the point. Titans Steve. isn't dark. Titans is just it's just real. It's just natural. It's a bunch of adults that have superpowers that are fucking. I mean, real superpowers life. aren't real. You know what I fucking mean, asshole. Fuck off. Anyways. All right, listen. Let's talk about some real shit for. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> so um, <laughs> you hate me right now, don't you? Anyways, uh, no. But on, on a serious note, let's talk about the Waynes for a second because the Waynes were were featured. Oh man, more than more than we were led to know. Thomas Wayne, okay. you could say, was a supporting character, almost supporting character, if not a villain. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, so listen. Thomas Wayne, this is the first time we've ever seen Thomas Wayne on the big screen, or little screen for that matter, and he's a fucking elite douchebag asshole. Asshole, right. That is a huge problem. I'm all about that. No. Because you want to know what? Because you don't like Batman. No, I do like Batman, you asshole. The thing is this, the, seeing seeing Thomas Wayne in all the other movies where he's this, like, you know... The elite doctor who cares about the people in society and is important we because be he's murdered by better. the people he's trying to save. That's important no. to the development of Bruce Wayne. No. What do you mean? No. Bruce yes. Bruce doesn't know. Bruce doesn't know. Bruce thinks his dad's perfect. Right. So isn't it amazing that actually his dad's an asshole? No, because everyone which says actually, no. which actually makes better sense for the comics because Thomas Wayne in the comics is a fucking asshole too. 
in the other universe because his wife and child got murdered. He's still an asshole. Because his wife and child got murdered. We can assume that. If my child was murdered, I'd be a pretty big fucking asshole, Steve. Listen, I'm just saying, I like seeing Thomas oh Wayne my God, being, no. being the elite silver spoon asshole. No, I don't. And I, you know what? I have enough of those movies. You know what's refreshing? That you have a rich guy who's actually a nice dude. That's refreshing. That's a piece of storytelling I never fucking no, hear. I was all about it. I was all about Thomas fucking Wayne. Fucking virtual signaling okay. postmodernist pieces yeah, but, of listen, shit. Listen, listen. I will say this. They did talk about, they did talk about Thomas Wayne impregnating... Peg, Penny or Peggy? I was I was terrified. Uh, if they made Arthur Fleck Thomas Wayne's son, I would have walked out. He's, here's the thing, dude. I would have walked out. Spoilers, guys. Arthur, a.k.a. Joker's mom, used to work for the Wayne Foundation, okay, or Wayne Enterprises. And she alluded to him, her and Thomas having an affair. Uh, and then she got let go. But in the process... Uh, signed like a non uh, non disclosure disclosure agreement with the Waynes that Joker was her son. That Joker was her son. No, I I think that's real. No, I think that's real. Stop. I think it's real. Stop. I think it's real because what they said is Joker confronts Thomas Wayne before he's Joker when he's Arthur and he says, "Dad, you know," and he's like, "What do you want from me? What do you?" And they, keep in mind, they all know his mother. And we see Alfred. Alfred knows his mother. Alfred was terrible. Yeah, we see we see Thomas Wayne. He. Knows with they, he mentions his mom's name and they all know her instantly. Okay, and this is like thirty years ago too. All right, they all know her and they all know about her and stuff like that. Because she's a psycho. And so Thomas Wayne. She says, was committed. Thomas Wayne says your mother was committed. She was delusional. She had all these disorders and stuff like that. And you were adopted. Okay, so Joker goes to Arkham Asylum to investigate. Finds the paperwork on his mom that shows she was committed with the adoption papers and all that shit like that. And then we have some flashback scenes where she is like, gung-ho, Thomas is the father, he's going to save me. And the psychiatrist is saying, no, that's not what it is at all, you've lost your fucking mind. Okay? You believe that to be the truth? Yes. See, I thought about this for a second. My initial reaction was, thank God they did not make Joker Thomas Wayne's son, a.k.a. Bruce's half-brother. Because what an atrocity that would fucking be to the Batman history. However, after thinking about it more, I think it was a cover-up by the elite. You just don't like comic books. I think, I do. I think it was a cover-up. Because that makes more sense, dude. Think about it. If you are a Thomas Wayne... Uh, here, I'll put it in terms you can fucking understand. You are Jeff Bezos, okay, from Amazon. You own the fucking world, okay? Everybody knows who the fuck you are. And guess what? You have an illegitimate... You have a you have a affair with an employee who works directly with you who ends up being, you know, bearing child to an illegitimate child and you're fucking married, okay? And if word got out about that, you would be fucking ruined in society. You don't have to explain like it that. to me. So, so hear me out. So what do you do? You fucking commit the bitch. You make her out to be psycho. You doctor fucking adoption papers to make it look like the motherfucker is adopted and it's not her fucking kid. And you fucking make her sign a non-disclosure agreement to fucking put you in the fucking clear. I understand. It's the story of Ishmael and Isaac. That I know. Makes, I, I know. Makes more sense. I know what they're trying to do. Again, Todd Phillips lifted everything in this movie. It's the story of Ishmael and Isaac, and I do not think that it works for Batman. I don't like it either, dude. I fucking hate it. I can't stand it. I'm like, oh my god, Joker can. No, no, be no. It, it, it makes sense, but I think it's stupid. It, 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 like, like to even to even hint at that and joke at that, like they did in this movie, I think is is fucking blasphemy. But after thinking about it, I think that's what they really think. I think the truth is Thomas Wayne really is Joker's fucking father. And which makes Joker the half brother to Bruce, which is beyond fucked uh, up. Who played Thomas Wayne? Was uh... it was the guy from that? It was the guy that played Green Goblin slash uh, Norman Osborn in Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, the Andrew Garfield kind of kind of looked like uh, Hawking Phoenix when they're in the bathroom. I'm like, huh? They kind of kind of look like each other a little bit. Uh, yeah. 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 I'm telling you, that's his fucking dad. Which sure. Is, which is bullshit. It's like no fucking way. So anyways, whatever. That was my biggest problem with the fucking movie, if I really had to say something. I think it was super slow the first half, which I think you would agree. Unnecessarily slow. I don't have a problem with with slow burn. I don't have a problem. Like, either. again, I, I love Breaking Bad. You know, so. the, the problem was is that they spent so much time on the dances and so much time on the laughter also. Ugh. You know, where he just laughed out of the blue for, like, literally a minute. You know? Um, yeah. 
And and uh, but whatever. So, um, but once he, you know, so Joker finds out about his mom and all that shit like that, and she goes, he goes and kills his mom. Yeah. And from then, it's just you know, it's insane. He, he, it is insane. He. It, oh, something else I don't like is towards the end of the movie. You might want to plug your ears, Libney. Something else I don't like, which is towards the end of the movie. So. You have that the 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 Joker people, right? Joker inspires this uprising amongst the poor to go kill rich people, which is fucking stupid. Which wait, wait, wait! It's not stupid though. Think about this for a second. Let's think about. No, I mean the fact wait, that Joker's let, inspiration. But, but let's think about real life here. Rodney King fucking gets beat. The fucking cops get acquitted, and L.A. breaks into a mass riot because sure. of it. Same thing, dude. Right, no, no, right, whatever. It's possible. What's his name? Thomas Wayne is walking out of the theater yeah. with his wife and young Bruce. And one of the clowns kills Thomas Wayne and kills Martha. his Martha yeah. and snatches the pearls. Yes. Is it a robbery, robbery or a politically motivated murder? I don't think that that harmonizes well, and I think that botches the story. I don't think it botches the story. I will say this. I don't like that the murder of the Waynes happened on the same night as the uprising. I, I don't believe that it, it should have been political. Yeah. And it I, was I, a robbery. I agree with you. I agree with you on that. But I will say this. Warner Brothers, and I said this to you in the fucking parking lot, Warner Brothers doubled down on the fucking Joker fucking killing the parent, the Waynes. Being okay? responsible for it. Being responsible because Jack Nicholson's Joker killed the Waynes in Batman 1989. And guess what? Joker be doing what Joker did in this movie, causing the uprising, caused that guy to go in the alley and kill the Waynes. So without the Joker, the Waynes would still be alive. Warner Brothers was fucking like, fuck it. We like I them. mean, at the end of the day, like, I mean, you, like, the, the what, all this might have not even been true. This whole movie could have been in his imagination. That's true, too, because half, half the movie we see is just turns out to be bullshit. That whole, right. That whole relationship he had with his neighbor down the hallway no, turned out to be bullshit. Not, well, you know? You don't think it's real? No, no. I'm, I mean, because at the end, he's in the, uh, he's in Arkham Asylum. Yes. And he, he's talking to a, a shrink. Yes. And the whole thing that the whole movie could have just been in his head. That's very true. Although, what? How do you explain him walking in the hallway with the bloody footprints? He kills her. Okay. Right, but that doesn't matter. See, I don't think the movie was in his head. I think it's real. I think at the end of the day, the whole Joker uprising thing happened. You know, unless Warner Brothers in DC is going to truly make this a standalone film. And not incorporate. How would you feel about that? And not incorporate Joaquin Phoenix's character into anything ever again. This is it. No sequel. Nothing. I think, and as, as much as I didn't like parts of this movie, I think that DC should abandon everything else they're doing, and use this to springboard. That would be great. I believe the the tone of the movie, the way this was filmed, everything about this movie was. Is better than anything else they're doing. Wait, but time out. With that said, how far off is this movie from Zack Snyder's dark version, which just happened to be PG-13? You give Zack Snyder the, the go-ahead to, to, to make it rated R, and you got the same fucking movie, dude. Maybe. Like Man of Steel, B BVS, Justice League, those movies. Like, how is Wonder Woman 1981 going to feel now? 84? 84. Mm. It's going to fucking feel like Aquaman, dude. Yeah, so... It's going to be light. I, 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 would, I, I, I would love for DC to abandon and continue down that route because it was really... In and like I said, as I did not like the movie in general, but I love the ending of the movie a lot. Yes. It, it's, it's, I thought it was better than anything Marvel has done. Well, see, I don't see Joaquin Phoenix reprising this role. No, no, he's not. In a sequel or anything like that. First of all, unless they throw him gobs of money. But here's my next question. So we have... Um, um, what's the guy's name that did The Kingsman? The director... I don't remember. He, well, he's doing the Batman with, with uh, Robert Patterson, mm -hmm. okay? Which Jonah Hill was just confirmed on the cast, as well as a bunch uh, uh, um Jeffrey Wright, who's going to be Commissioner Gordon from from uh, from Westworld. So, you know, what if Joaquin Phoenix's Joker is in this? Because it's rumored that this movie is going to be the long Halloween, which if Todd... That's not Todd Phillips, because that's Joker. Um, whatever his name is. Uh, whoever's making the Batman... Uh, if they do the the long Halloween story, that incorporates basically the rogues gallery. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm just thinking from a timeline perspective. Joaquin Phoenix is portrayed in this movie probably his real age, which is in his 40s. 
Okay. Sure. Like Bruce is still what twelve? Yeah. Okay, so add ten years to it. You know, I just don't see right. But but the thing is, like, what what they could be doing with Joker is turning him into a legacy character, mm -hmm. right? Where there's been many different Jokers, and Joker is a mantle, just like Batman and and Flash, right? Okay. Um, one of those guys in that uprising could be the next Joker. Right, right, right. It doesn't have to be Fleck. And I think that's what DC's going for. If they're smart, they'll do that. Um, <laughs> okay. I agree with you. I think that the... I don't know. I think that the mythos of Batman is important. I think that there's a lot of things that make Batman important. And I don't know. Maybe it's my personal opinion, right? But what, what's one of the longest running debate is is what is what is Batman, right? Is do the villains appear? Because in, in the comics... As we know, most of the villains are new. Yeah. Right? The villains appear about the same time as Batman does. So the question is, is, is Batman necessary, right? Or is Batman a cause, right, of all these villains? Yeah. Right? And I think that all these movies that DC has done lately, and even the Gotham show that I love, answering that question for us, I think it's a disservice to the, to, to the story of Batman. I got you. Well... Do you disagree? I don't disagree with you. I don't. But at the same time, too, like Batman always has a, had a moral code and something that we all know about Batman. But then we see him kill in BVS and we're okay with it. You know? Him cracking and like he doesn't have that moral co code anymore. And that scene in that warehouse was awesome. It, it is awesome, but at the same time, that that's okay for me to see, but not okay for that's what the uh, that's not what I want the character to be. Right. Right. Because once once Batman, if Batman starts killing, right, if Batman takes that extra step, right, then th there's there's questions that are that are provoked about the character of Batman that I, I, I don't like. Right. So like is Batman all of a sudden a vigilante because he's doing it for the good of, of Gotham. Right. Or is Batman just a psychopath who's abusing his money in order to live out his violent fantasies? I think the moment That's that Thomas Wayne. Right. Batman. No, I think the moment. Right. I think yeah. the moment that ba that Bruce Wayne starts killing people, it's it. I, I think it brings unnecessary questions to the character of Batman. Well, yeah. Let's circle back to Joker, though. This movie has made tons of money. It broke the weekend opening record for the month of October. I think it made 93 million in the U.S., over 200 million worldwide. Really? So, and so, which means it probably already made over its, 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 its budget. budget was 50 million oh, or yeah. 55. Great. Perfect. So, <laughs> wow. So Warner, listen, this is good news. This is good news for Warner Brothers and this is good news for DC Comics in the same way that Logan doing well was good news for the X-Men and Fox. Well, not so good news. Fox was still bought out. Fox was still bought out, but Warner... But but Disney's not going to buy Warner Brothers, okay? And and what Logan gave us to the X Men, Joker can give us to the DC. But here's my question: Batman. the way I'm seeing, it, I'm pretty sure that this Joker is going to be standalone. It can't work with their shared universe because of what they did to Bruce Wayne, what they've done to Gotham in general, does not fit into the narrative in the other movies, the Batman and the other movies. Well, we don't know what the Batman, Rob Patterson's Batman, is going to be like. We don't know where it fits with Wonder Woman and Aquaman, if it fits at all. Maybe Warner Brothers will have a shared universe amongst Batman and Batman only. Do you think that Warner Brothers you know? should just discard the shared universe and make standalone movies? I say no, because I think the public will compare everything to Marvel moving forward for a very long time, if not forever. It doesn't matter when this movie made $100 million. It will if, if, if we see another Joker portrayed by someone else and and what's his name still alive and people will be like why didn't they just put Joaquin Phoenix in well amazing. because he's super old I get you I'm with you but I'm just saying like listen the public wants the shared universe they do you know DC and, and DC treads on that you know Shazam came out this year and they they, they made references to Batman and Superman and the Justice League throughout well, the Batman and movie. Superman you know? appeared I mean Superman appeared indirectly but yes no his whole suit his whole suit he was, was there, there. And it was the Justice League version of the suit. Right. So, so Warner Brothers is recognizing a shared universe. They're just not, they're not rushing as much as they were before, and and they're being very cautious as to how in depth they get at it. But they recognize it, dude. You know, and so I, I think I think a shared universe is ha is gonna is still happening. I'm, I'm sure we'll see another Justice League movie in our lifetime. Um, it just depends on how far deep they want to go. But I really think 
that the Batman verse could be standalone from the rest of the Justice League. I think this Batman movie that's coming out, Matt Reeves is the guy named, by the way, I just came to me, uh, could could tie in with this Joker movie, could tie in with the Harley Quinn Birds of Prey movie. I would hope not. I, I hope not. That trailer was garbage yes, it looks horrible it's and, and ladies i love you but this movie's totally made for you and it's like the books that are made for you that i don't really care for i don't think it's like the books <laughs> at all i think it looks sorry. awful sorry sorry anyways uh <laughs> it it does look it just it, it looks i think campy. it just looks bad it looks campy and bad. i don't even think it looks campy yeah. i just think it looks like a direct to tv anyways let's let's not get off topic here let's talk more about joker for a second joaquin phoenix uh oscar worthy no no, really. I don't feel like it was. I like the the performance never felt organic. Not towards the end. That's why I liked it at the end. It felt organic. I do think for the, for most of the movie, it felt like Joaquin Phoenix was performing for us, and he knew he was performing for us, and we knew he was. It was never to me Arthur Fleck or the Joker. It was always Joaquin Phoenix presenting the Joker. So, well, we're we're being introduced to that character. Why not? Huh? Because it never felt like an organic character. It okay, felt so like he was overacting. So Joaquin Phoenix, you say, doesn't deserve a Best Actor? No, he does not. Nomination, at least? No, nothing. I, I disagree. I think he does. Let's talk. Let's talk. Uh, best Director, Todd Phillips. Uh, absolutely not. I felt the movie was disjointed. Really? And conflicting. See, I disagree with you too. What a Best Picture? No. No. In a world where the Oscars fucking put movies like Black Panther as Best Picture, Black Panther was a statement, dude. It doesn't matter. It was. It, it does matter because we all know it's not a good movie. It doesn't matter. It lowered the bar. It lowered the bar, which makes Joker el just eligible, and if not more qualified. I, I felt like it was two different movies. I, I think pacing was a huge problem with this movie. Listen, I'm telling you right now, I think Joker's going to get... It's going to take it a shit ton of nominations. Yes, I think I think it's going to get Best Actor nomination. Yes. I think it's going to get Best Director nomination, and I think it's going to get Best Picture nomination. And I think out of all those things, the only one it'll win is, I think, Joaquin Actor. Phoenix will win. And that'll be a shame. I don't think it'll be a shame. I think it's a statement to the genre. I think it's it it, it uh. Well, it needs one. You know, like uh, all these directors that came out keep out and talking shit. That really bothers me. Like uh, Martin Scorsese is the newest one. That doesn't bother. That me. basically came out and said, you know, the these Marvel aren't movies are like theme parks. Yeah, I agree with that though. I don't agree with that. They're yeah. actual movies with like yeah, but character development. Yeah, but they're 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 like theme parks. It's like yeah, I agree. Yeah. No, what are you talking? It's a movie. I know it is a movie, but it, it's it's. They're a, not theme parks. It's, it's, I know it's not. It's a metaphor, you fuck. The metaphor doesn't make sense. <laughs> the metaphor makes no sense. <laughs> it's a stupid metaphor. Whatever. Anyways, we can talk about that another time. We're talking about Joker right now. All right. Um, which, by the way, Scorsese was supposed to do a Joker movie. I don't know if you remember way back when he was he was uh, attached to it with I think uh, Leo DiCaprio, mm. but that didn't pan out. That obviously. Thank God. Um. So, uh, Joker's making all the money in the world, which we knew it would. Uh, it'll probably remain making all the money. I, I think the Will Smith Gemini Man comes out this That's week. That's not going to do anything. Which isn't going to even touch this Joker movie. The next big movie to really come out, I think, is uh, Terminator, Dark Fate. Uh, Rock, no, that Rock, won't make, that's not going to make money. It it, it, I, it it could unseat Joker. I think it'll unseat I don't know. Maybe, yeah, because it'll be old by then. Yeah. Um, but either way. Uh, I think Star Wars is the next just big movie, right? No, Frozen 2. Whatever. Yeah. Let it go, dude. Anyways. Um, so, that was so stupid. I know it was. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> but it was quick. Hey. Nah, 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 nah. Um, so. Uh, do your Joker dance, dude. Do your Joker dance. Class mojo. Look, asshole. Put, pick up the mic again. Come on. What the fuck? Anyways, so uh, that that's Joker movie. Joker movie's made almost $100 million for the weekend. Um and uh do you recommend people to see it i don't think it's necessary no but if someone asks you should i see this movie sure go watch it i think it's the best thing no not right like now. should like do you think someone should watch it if you're a fan of the genre yes jesus christ if you're if, if you're if you're a comic book fan yeah if you're not then not necessary i think if you're not you should too anyways i think this is a good this is a movie you should watch i didn't like it and i think people should watch this movie you know what it is? I just I don't like the fact that that it's going to put preconceived notions in people's minds of who the Joker is and where he comes from. I, I don't care. I don't care about that. I, I what I care about is that you remember when uh, V for Vendetta came out 
And ever since then, people wear Guy Fox mask all the fucking time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This same bullshit is going to happen uh, because there's nothing more than fucking 17 year olds like them bullshit postmodernism. Fucking truth is subjective bullshit. And this is going to give these fucking people something to rally around. And it's going to be really fucking annoying. I, will say I this can't thing. stand how many goddamn Joker costumes I'm going to see and those Joker fucking clown masks. And every time someone hacks a goddamn computer, they're going to come out with a Joker thing and be like, fuck the rich. Oh, my God. I will say this. The, the police presence at the theaters was was, was Unnecessary. Heavy. Like, really. like. Heavy. Yeah, that breeds a question, right? Like, what do you do? Like, when you have, are you actually being safe? Are you giving weight to the, all this like bullshit stuff that was around this movie? Because I think it was bullshit. And I think by like cops being at the movie theater, you're giving weight to this when people should just ignore it. Because for the most part, nothing is going to happen. Do you think the overall rhetoric of the movie though can influence individuals to? No, act no, like that? no. Like those type, the the type of the individuals that are going to be inspired by a fucking comic book creation are going to be inspired by anything they just need a tick it's going to be whatever it's not going to be video games and it's not going to be a movie they're just fucking attention seeking pieces of shit so why give them the attention why announce to everyone there's going to be police presence and we're canceling this movie and we're closing down the theater early right all you're doing is telling these people that the threat of them doing something is valid jeremy spoken class today <laughs> yeah, you get so annoyed so easily. Anyways, hmm? uh, so yeah, there you guys have it. I think that's it, right? That pretty much covers the Joker. Yeah, that covers the Joker. Yeah, the Joker. The next DC movie to come out though is looks like Birds of Prey, right? <laughs> Birds of Prey and the Emancipation of Harley of the Harley Quinn or whatever. And then what else? Is Suicide Squad. And no, no. After that is Wonder Woman. Then after that is Suicide Squad. And Aquaman two is being done too, right? Not hasn't even started filming yet. Neither is the Batman. The Batman is not slated to come out until 2021, summer 2021. Who cares? Oh, my God. That's so far away. I know. It's so far away, dude. Why do they announce this shit? I don't know, but it gives us more reason to breathe. No, and, what reason to breathe? I don't live. I'm not going to live for the fucking Batman movie <laughs> with Twilight. What are you, crazy? Dude, Robert Pattinson's going to do a great job. I don't know, man. You need more reasons to live. Whatever. Suck a dick. Anyways. Uh, I think that's it, though, right? Yeah, I'm done. All right, so guys, check out the Joker, anyways, because I will say this: by by you guys supporting this movie and it doing good in theaters, it uh, it proves to these theaters that doing edgier, adult like hero genre movies uh, are 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 worth it. And you know, we love the Marvel movies. Not gonna shit on the Marvel movies, but there's a campiness to them, like a theme park, um, that that doesn't that that we won't that. If other movies aren't accepted, we won't get other versions of it. Everything will look like Or a if movie. after a dreary, horrible, work-filled week that you're beaten down by society, you want to go to the movies to escape, only to get beaten down more, don't fucking go and show these movie theaters that what they're doing is making fucking movies, not statements or politics, just movies. Well, Hollywood's all about making statements and politics, especially well, nowadays. Yes. Well, yeah. then don't see Joker out of protest. Ah. Uh. Well, anyways, there you guys have it. So check out Joker either way. Um, like, subscribe, share our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com forward slash Corker Comics. Come check us out at our three locations. Uh, we are right here in Miami on uh, 107th and 8th Street across from FIU. We have another location in Coral Gables on Lejeune, just north of US 1. And then our home store over in Pember Pines on Pines Boulevard, just east of University. Uh, for ha <laughs> ha! For a Tom Fop future family, little boy, uh, I'm Stephen Corker. And if you're poor, congratulations, because that means you're obviously a good human being. I'm Juan, who's poor, so obviously I'm good. And cut. <laughs>